she died in return. The unbelievable story of second chances. Ever wondered about life and death mysteries? Join me, Olive, for a mind-bending story that challenges our understanding of existence. This captivating tale unfolds as someone faces death, not once but twice, revealing encounters with ethereal beings, telepathic connections with God, and glimpses of the future. Stay tuned for a roller coaster of emotions that will leave you questioning reality. Hit the thumbs up, subscribe, and ring the bell for more riveting narratives. Let's dive into the extraordinary journey together. Welcome, everyone. I'm Olive, and I'm here to share the profound near-death experiences of individuals who have transcended our earthly realm and glimpsed the mysteries beyond. If you find these narratives compelling, kindly express your support by hitting the thumbs up, subscribing, and ringing the bell icons to stay updated on our channel's new content. Your engagement is not only free, but also instrumental in fostering the growth of this community. To my returning viewers, a warm welcome back. Today I bring you a special treat, a two-for-one experience featuring a repost from last year and a tale shared on the Enderf website, embracing a no-spoiler format. Let's settle in, savor a cup of coffee or tea, and immerse ourselves in the extraordinary accounts awaiting us. Failing from a family with a legacy of heart issues, I, aware of the risks posed by high cholesterol and blood pressure, underwent an exe that revealed mild ischemia. Despite receiving clearance from the doctor, my sister, a nurse, persisted in advocating for additional tests like heart catheterization or heart x-rays. After a five-month plea to my primary physician, a heart catheter was scheduled for March 1, 2006. This procedure uncovered a revelation. Three arteries were 80 blocked. A seemingly straightforward heart stent placement was scheduled for March 16, 2006, a procedure deemed less complex than open-heart surgery. During the stent placement, an unforeseen complication arose. A pin-sized hole was accidentally punctured in my heart, triggering substantial bleeding. Unconscious of this development, I found myself back in the intensive care unit, tethered to an array of machines. Morphine coursed through my veins, lulling me into a space beyond consciousness. Deteriorating swiftly, the signs of distress prompted my loved ones to intervene, leading to a code blue. The doctor, stepping in, drained three bags of blood from my chest cavity over the ensuing 24 hours. In those critical junctures, I traversed into total darkness, with distant echoes urging me to persist and remain connected to the world of the living. Despite the literal absence of light, an overwhelming serenity enveloped me, an indescribable. Soon after, I encountered a radiant and glorious light, reminiscent of that fleeting nanosecond before a soul stands before God following the departure of the earthly vessel. The darkness embraced me in that timeless interlude, akin to standing on a dimly lit stage with an intense spotlight fixed upon me. Recognizing my demise, my soul engaged in telepathic communion with God, commencing my prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I thought I had done something to lengthen my life. It seems I have done something to shorten it. Please forgive any sin keeping me from your presence. Every nuance of this interaction is etched in my memory. Upon concluding my prayer, an angelic countenance adorned with a beautiful smile materialized nearby, assuring me, you're going to be all right. To this day, the identity of this presence, nurse angel or my own spirit re-entering my body, remains a mystery. In the immediate aftermath, the nurse announced, Doctor, we have a pulse. Following a four-day hospital stint for vital sign monitoring and blood replenishment, my cardiologist granted me release. The nurse elucidated the events. A pin-sized hole during the stent placement resulted in cardiac arrest, as the heart sac filled with this dramatic episode unfolded within a mere 40 minutes. A loved one corroborated this timeline, recounting fervent prayers in the waiting room. A Baptist minister joined in, and their collective prayers manifested as the gift of life. Whenever I recount this blessed encounter, the emphasis invariably falls on the transformative power of prayer and the profound, comforting love that enveloped me, rendering it an awe-inspiring episode. Concluding our first narrative, Let's transition to the second. Abruptly, I found myself amidst the company of those who had departed before me. Although the how and why remained elusive, a reassuring presence accompanied me throughout this ethereal rendezvous. 
The departed souls exuded joy at my arrival, and I reciprocated with equal delight. While I could identify each person in that moment, retrospective recollection fails to reveal their identities. The experience of embodying my true self, unburdened by the constraints of a physical form and its daily defenses, brought profound A voice behind me made reference to Earth and a vision of the beautiful Earth, adorned with vibrant fall trees in western New York, unfolded. My response was conveyed not through spoken words, but rather a telepathic projection of thought comprehended by all present. Subsequently, I observed myself and mused. That physical form wasn't too shabby, contemplating my intermittent struggles with weight. As my gaze shifted towards my husband and four children, a yearning tugged at my being. Yet I resisted the magnetic pull urging me to return, engaging in a silent negotiation with a desire to retain every detail of this extraordinary encounter. I reluctantly yielded to the decision to come back, opting for the lengthier route. Though an intuitive sense hinted at a swifter return, my defiant spirit prevailed. The luminous being behind me gently pressed. Proceed. Gradually, the ethereal companions who accompanied me vanished, and in tandem with the guiding presence, I commenced my journey back, opting for the extended path akin to circling a vast lake. As I traversed what can only be likened to a tunnel, I encountered glimpses of three future events in my life. Two of these upcoming scenarios elicited robust reactions, a blend of shudders and relief as I glided past them. Hovering over the hospital, we descended through its roof, catching glimpses of individuals on various floors engrossed in their daily activities. Our descent culminated in the operating room where my body lay amidst doctors and nurses, overhearing their discourse. The doctor underscored the significance of not losing me during what he considered a routine procedure. They focused their efforts around my head, and for a fleeting moment, we hovered above, silent witnesses. Addressing the being beside me, I conveyed my hesitancy to return. Exhibiting a hint of impatience, the being gestured towards my lifeless form, and instantly, I found myself seamlessly re-embodied. The doctor urgently invoked my name, imploring me to draw a breath. Initially resistant, I acquiesced, feeling the life force surge through my body, albeit with a painful inhalation. Emerging from the recovery room, tears streamed down my face, and the nurse tenderly wiped them away. A profound sense of detachment from the extraordinary afterlife presence enveloped me, a desperate longing to return to that alternate realm, where freedom, love, and beauty transcended linguistic expression, inundated my being. Struggling to grasp the fading essence, I found myself speaking in tongues. In English, I communicated to the nurse my reluctance to return. Sensing her genuine concern, she likened me to a newborn requiring my nurturing care. And thus concludes the narrative of today's profound encounter. I invite you to share your reflections in the comments below. Until our next exploration, stay safe and may blessings continue to accompany you on your journey.